It all started with a video game. Oh God, no! Oh, I'm running! I'm running! I'm springing! I'm springing! During the 2020 pandemic lockdown, I invited my buddy T to join me in Phasmophobia. And it was the lockdown diversion I needed. But as we were easing out of the pandemic, I got a phone call from Phil asking me, how would you like to do this for real? And now, here we are, just two dads living their best life while investigating the afterlife. Before being named Linville Manor by its current owner, this plantation located in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, was founded in the 17th century under the ownership of Captain John Smith. The crops of the time included tobacco, rice, coffee, and what was considered the most valued of the New World's offerings, sugar. Ownership of the plantation changed in the 18th century to the Bowie family, and in 1854, the Bowie Johnson House was constructed and christened as Thorpland, named after the original name of the property. The Bowie Johnson House, built on the site of an earlier home destroyed by a devastating fire, was designed in the Greek Revival style, a two-story, five-bay dwelling set on a parged foundation, a wood frame structure clad in weatherboard siding. Following residence by Sarah Maria Bowie, widow of Charles Bowie, Thorpland came under the ownership of the McKenney family from 1889 to 1951. During this period, Thorpland fell into disrepair. It was former United States Representative Calvin D. Johnson and his wife Gladys who rescued the house in 1951, but not without some cost. Johnson's numerous alterations and additions to the house, now called Glad Acres, after his second wife, Gladys, lost its significance as a mid-19th century Greek Revival-style dwelling. The house remained under Johnson's ownership until 1981. Glad Acres would trade ownership amongst several tenants. Due to neglect, the house fell into disrepair once again and for years remained the dilapidated house on the hill. In an unexpected turn of events, Wynn Brewer found himself the new owner of Linville after winning the property in an online auction. He immediately began efforts to restore the home and almost right away began to experience unexplained happenings. Upon completion of primary restoration efforts, Wynn christened the house Linville Manor in honor of his mother and now welcomes friends and visitors to the property and he doesn't hesitate to go above and beyond as a host. Linville Manor is so much more than a house. It is an ongoing story where the past and present intersect. It is a timeless space where the resident spirits are just as interested as learning the guests' stories as they are in revealing their own. This is of an episode that I have really been looking forward to, Phil. And as you can tell, we ain't at your house. Nope. We ain't at my house. Nope. We are at Linville Manor with Wynn Brewer himself. We are so thrilled to have you on the show, Wynn. We really are. Um, I can literally feel the couch vibrating beneath me from just your excitement. <laughs> I know, right? I feel like I've got to, I've got to play it cool for you. Do. I'm you do. Well, I got to balance out the energy. You have to, you have to balance it out just a little bit, but. Uh, when, in a nutshell, can you just tell us a little bit about where we are right now? Tell us about your inspiration in putting back together Linville Manor. 
I got laid off from a job and then I was looking for a new job, got a new job in the area. And then I thought, well, you know, maybe I should kind of start settling down because I was outside of the typical DC area right. to the Maryland farmland. Right. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, maybe it's a good time to invest in some real estate pre pandemic, but I was looking for a two bedroom house. My redfin settings were very low and <laughs> somehow I see this house, which uh, from the listing <clears throat> photo, it looks like the white house. And I thought, what is this? And it was 12 minutes from my new job. So looked into it. Turns out it was in this crazy online auction. Uh, went back and forth. This company out of Texas didn't know who I was bidding against. And finally, I just called it quits and said, ah, you know, it was, it was a nice dream. It right. looked cool, maybe. Uh, weeks later, they called me back and said, oh, congratulations. Somebody else dipped out of the auction because they were probably trying to bid it up. And they said, yes or no. And it's one of those... Oh, yes. And then your life is different. So, uh -huh. But, you know, only a few months, got some doors put on, like pipes and retrofitted it. And then, because I'm not an interior decorator, I looked around at the house. It kind of had this mid-century vibe. And mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, there's probably about the same amount of rooms that there are in the Clue board game. So just look at the Clue board game. If it fits in the Clue board game, put it in the house. It'll work. Now, had he known, I'm just guessing here. Had you known when that this place was already haunted, you probably would have designed it off of a Ouija board instead of a Clue game, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just a, a different game. Yeah, exactly. A very different kind of game. Uh, yeah. And I do love the fact, though, that you use Clue, uh, you know, as your foundation, if you will. I mean, the only thing missing here is Tim Curry walking around going, "Yes, I'm the butler. I butler." Uh, right. <laughs> right. No. But the, uh, so okay, so so you get this house. You, you, you start you start putting some love back into it. When did the house start talking back to you? Construction was going on in the house, and it's about that time, like I was sitting in here, this very room, probably around midnight, trying to do work on a laptop, because I was still holding down a full-time job, right, right. trying to live a normal life outside of this evolving <laughs> crazy life, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But um, at that point, you know, I would start to hear some noises, Around 111, it started seeing like it was repeating, and it, at times it would sound like a toolbox or something crashing in the dining mm. room, and go in there, nothing. There was a dog living here at the time, and Copper would come into the room and just sort of stare in the doorway, and I'm like, that's a little off-putting. <laughs> uh, and you start to just kind of like get that vibe so that mm. when you were doing something, it wasn't just like, all right, here's a, you know the thousandth project of the week. Right. It was... You know, I'm going to just call out and ask for some permission here because it felt like there was yeah. just, you feel judgment sometimes yeah. Yeah. from others in a room, whether they're like present or ghost. Like, I think you just start to like sense that energy. You have guests begin reporting more than what you experienced, right? You are having feelings, maybe a couple small things, but then guests are starting to report these wild experiences as a business owner where you're like, oh crap. I need to figure this out. Yeah, I, I would say that's definitely true because, you know, it's an interesting marketplace. Some people like yourselves come and you're very interested and mm -hmm. respectful to the history. But then other individuals, I've had families come and like if they see anything online like haunted or they come in and they just start to get that impression yeah. because... I think we all get this impression of like, oh, hey, like they're back. Like, let's chat. That's yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah, the right, vibe. Right, it's right. like a buzzing energy. Right, right. So the it couch was like, you know, like yeah. it's that good energy. But then, you know, I think sometimes people can encounter, there may be one or two things in and around the house yeah. that have a different personality. Yeah. And when you start to bump up against that, whether or not you intend to, and you feel it, you're like, mm, this isn't for me. So <laughs> the initial yeah. idea was... Weddings, murder mysteries, mm -hmm. baby showers, you know, like you've got four sure. acres here to work with. Yeah. So, you know, appreciate the house and the grounds for that. But I think you can't come here and not pick up on something. Right. So in my mind, I was like, okay, like the people who are coming here not for ghosts, uh, this this could shy away something that is a work in progress. Yeah. So you need yeah. that. You need that income to come in to yeah. continue to renovate and make it what it is and yeah. to let people come experience it. Of course, I want to ask about kindred spirits and were you motivated to bring them in just to be sure your sense of, of how things were in the house was, was okay and to help you deal with some of those personalities you said that tend to be a little more prickly and how best to approach that? 
Yes. Um, I definitely respect and appreciate their approaches. They're respectful to every home that they go. They seek a solution for the family or for the <coughs> residents, and they, they want to have a good result afterwards, which... Uh, we talked about the iron spikes. Yeah. Yep. Um, one of them is starting to kind of wash out in the corner, so I, I'm gonna <laughs> re-secure it, make sure it, it's buried. Um, but having yeah. the conversation that it's not necessarily about those iron spikes, but intention. Absolutely. And how far that that goes was really important because you know I live here full time, so there has to be kind of that separation and protected space. Oh, which sure. I don't know if we'll talk about it later, but it seems like. Someone is kind of getting a little bit more curious into that space of the home. Okay. okay. And when I say someone, spirit or ghost. Right, yeah. right, right, right. That is a great segue into the clips that we have because as I was putting these together for this reveal, I kept thinking in the back of my mind, what did kindred spirits not show the general public? Because tonight we have 17 and I stopped counting after about 30 or 40. Seven, but we have 17. Yeah, we boiled it down because even <laughs> I sent you 10, yeah. and I knew you were down to the wire. Yeah. And so yeah. I, initially I had 20 contenders. And I said, let me pare this down <laughs> because I can just see the veins on T's forehead. It was, it was, it was, this at midnight. And, and it's hard. <laughs> and, it, and it's hard. And I kept thinking, if this is what we caught, after three days, I can only assume kindred spirits had all this other stuff yeah. that they didn't share. And I'm I'm now bursting with curiosity. If I if I go to one of these paracons, I'm gonna the first question to Amy and Adam is going to be, what did you not show us from Lindenville mm -hmm. Manor? Because I know from our three visits, yeah. we just got a treasure trove of things. Some of the best clips that we have are when we're setting up. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't well, set up because you can tell because the lights are on. And this is the setup for our very first visit to Lindenville Manor. So Make sure we're yeah. That's what I thought. We need to be. And that was was that about this time last year? It was year? almost. It was almost, almost to the year. Almost to the year. Almost to the wow! Year. I knew it was springtime. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. uh, it was the weekend after mm -hmm. Easter. Wow! Yeah. So okay. so yeah. So, so it's it's nearly been a year mm -hmm. since we've been here to the date, wow. and um, as we're setting up for our first ever investigation, because this day you had had the Easter egg hunt. Right? That's right. Yes. Yes. I thought of you last weekend because we did another, yes. and I was there was like. <laughs> We're trying to clean up. I'm like, I remember whenever we were like still finding eggs and you guys were arriving. Finding eggs. Like, <laughs> kept finding eggs. It was a we were finding ghosts and eggs. It was yeah. great. And during the setup, this happened. All right. Okay. Just about ready to I'm just setting up the camera. You have the cat ball. <laughs> I am uh, the cat ball experience. What does the Eddie do? Why is it blinking blue? Well, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be, um, I'm going to just go ahead and cut this off and recalibrate it. It's supposed to be checking a lot of different, a lot of different things. It's supposed to be checking, uh, it's supposed to be checking very much pressure. It's supposed to be checking, um, at, when, when, the, when the orange lights go off, it's checking uh, vibrations. It's checking a lot of different things. Yeah. My favorite bit about this during setup now is we have the drunken singing coming from what sounds like the kitchen with in here it's yeah I heard that. So I can only assume that was like maybe Gladys was in the kitchen and one of the musicians that had come that she had hired for one of the events was just warming up in the ballroom. Yeah. 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 And uh, caught that on several devices mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure. I said first I had sent you a text saying. Pip or Tina singing in the ballroom, and I said, and I, yeah. and that the the second humming, I was like, wait, that wasn't you. Yeah. I was convinced that, that was Phil yeah, humming, right. and, just, and they were not even in the ballroom. Right. You guys were in the in the library, and I had another recorder where you can kind of hear me like whispering things to myself because I'm getting stuff out. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take this and put this here, and then you hear the humming over my voice. Yeah. So that's how I. Knew and that was set up. <laughs> that was set up and. It was like, okay, we're off and running. And and let me let me ask, have you ever had anyone report singing? So some people have said that they've heard music or sound or singing from the ballroom okay. area. People have definitely reported hearing two men arguing in there yeah. and <laughs> often in French. We don't know. But I will say what's interesting <laughs> is that um, 
I think that the humming, it, you know, we think about Gladys, we think about those parties mm. of the mm-hmm. 1950s. Yeah. Right. But you could also think prior to that, um, because a lot of the individuals who go in this room report feeling sort of the after effects of the fire from the first oh, yeah. plantation yeah. burning right. down. Um, people have reported feeling hot in that area and running with like heat on their back. Which we did have a couple personal experiences in that space where... Serena said she was just starting to feel like really hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you think too about the house in general, that area was built in the 1950s. Mm-hmm. Right. But before then, we don't know specifically what was out here. I mean, it could mm-hmm. have been an area where like the enslaved indiv- individuals of the of the house hung out yeah. beside the house. You know, there were different activities. But so I could imagine maybe some like of the enslaved folk being around and like humming and yeah. singing, and um, we've continually are now stumbling across artifacts from probably the old kitchen on the other side of the house in the rose garden. And so, you know, I think that we too have to think about like, this is a working plantation and Mm -hmm. all of those lives involved too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, I mean, you know, I think that is the room where music sort of is always around. So yeah, it makes sense. Uh, some it some sense. spirit might have said they're setting up. It's going to be another party. Uh, they might have started yeah, like kind of saying we're going to have some good music. Yeah, some good music. Yeah. So we go lights out. <clears throat> we are now set up. We've got a lot of things running in your ballroom. We've got a flare going. We've got at least two. IR cameras going. We've got cat balls. We've got Eddie out. We're we're rocking and rolling. And representation. Well, there was a representative that lived here. That's right, Calvin. Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, are you here with us, or is it you, Glass? Because I know Calvin was your husband. I know. Things kind of went south a little bit for you in your relationship, and I'm sorry, that must have been very hard. That one pops for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's here. It's here. And I'm, I, I, at first I wasn't sure if it was he's here or it's here, but it's something here. And uh, you were you were talking to Calvin Johnson. Now Calvin Johnson was the representative, correct? Um, right, that was he was a, <clears throat> a representative. State representative, yes. Illinois. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and he lived here with Gladys. Yeah, that was a that was a that was a definite vibe that we were picking up. Um, well, because we got we had a representation. Mm-hmm. We got uh, democracy oh. a couple times. Mm-hmm. So things that kind of fit that fabric mm-hmm. of. A government official. But we also, we were also entertaining, as we are going to see in the next clip, we were entertaining someone named Lily. Now, what can you tell us? Who? What can you tell us about Lily? Yeah, so from some of the earliest individuals who have been interested in the paranormal side of things here um, began to make contact with what they said was a spirit of a small girl who made herself known as Lily. Uh, we have checked we've since found the Mm -hmm. family cemetery connected to the house that's near the property uh there were no lilies out there Mm -hmm. however um similar groups same groups continue to make contact with a small child and they think between the ages of three to seven Mm -hmm. uh so they got they've gotten lily they've gotten ellie they've gotten el and then you go to the cemetery and you actually find Eliza out there who passed away at age three. Uh, okay. So okay. we're thinking that Lily could have been Eliza and it could be a nickname, right. you know, like right. little, little Lily. Yeah. yeah. Um, so any lots of groups have made contact. Some even have unknowingly taken photos. There's one of actually this room where a history group was here. The woman, Lynn, took a picture and uh, she got home, was starting to look at it and said, oh, like I thought something was on your window. And then when I zoomed in, she's like, oh, no, it's it's a small child, probably around three or four years really? old. Um, people have heard giggling right through here, this passageway. So it's mainly like in this room, in the library, people do think that they make a lot of contact with Lily. People have brought dolls and sometimes cat balls and things. Mm-hmm. And when they're chatting with Lily, it seems that those things kind of become active. Well, it turns out that night we also made contact with Eliza or Lily. And um, she didn't mind uh, spilling, the, sp- spilling the tea, as it were, yeah. about what they like to do, what she liked to do to entertain. Did you sneak down here sometimes and watch the grown-ups? 
You did. Me. You it's did. Bad. bad. Well, that's not. I mean, well, it's not that bad. Not that bad. I mean, You're I just really curious. Like no, most kids would come down and check it out. No. No. You weren't curious. Were you the only one to sneak down of the kids in the house? Did you ever get caught sneaking downstairs watching the grown-ups? Green for yes, red for no. And it's okay, you can tell us. We can keep secrets. We are good at keeping secrets. No. You never got caught. You no. <laughs> <laughs> must be very sneaky. Impressive. <laughs> and that's my daughter saying that, so that 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 makes me stress out a little bit. That is and adorable, though. I, it was. It was it, yeah. uh, we had so we had a lot of a lot of interactions mm -hmm. with the Flux too, and and we nicknamed our Simon. Yeah. But the thing was uh, because we were shooting it in IR for this clip, that's why I did the green red colors because I wanted to have that satisfaction. Yeah. But the 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 thing is is that. <laughs> Of all the act interactions that we had with Simon in the, in the visits we had here, this is one of my favorites mm -hmm. because it does seem like, did you ever get caught? No, right. no. I, you know, right. She was so insistent about it, she had to tell us twice. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, yeah, I think really what's, what's great too is like I've you know I've visited different cities and yeah. gone to like ghost tours and different things, and you always are like, oh, like we get you know you might get something on EMF or something, you know, but like. Here is the only place where I've really seen sort of direct answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's it's with so many groups that they get a lot. It's like right when you get in the right line of questioning with yeah. the right entity, you start getting the responses like this, like, were you sneaky? And yeah. did you get caught? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? <laughs> but it's, well, it, it's, and it goes back to intent. It mm -hmm. goes back to something that we, we had a five-minute paranormal about. Uh, it's something that Phil has... Uh, drilled into my skull constantly, and it's, he almost has it. I almost have it. I almost have it. it. Um, if you can remember what it is, exactly. yes. <laughs> so long as you can remember what the what to have the intent over, right. we're good. Yeah. But the the thing is that yeah, it, um, there's when when you go into a into a place, it doesn't matter if it's Linville Manor, the candy factory, or Gettysburg. If you have the right intent, I think that's when you start to see a lot of back and forth response. We've had it at the Jenny Wade house, we've had it at the factory, and of course we've had it here. Um, and that exchange, it's just, it, it just made me smile. It made yeah. me smile so much. Now I'm going to turn the uh, I'm going to turn the reins over to Phil on this one because Phil gets to premiere for the first time on on our show. Uh, our first FLIR clip. Our first now, FLIR clip. Explain first off what the FLIR is. So the FLIR is it's a thermal imager. Okay. Right, and it's uh, the unit we have connects right to the iPhone or the iPad. It's sold more for industrial applications, i.e., looking for leaks in your ductwork or issues with your, your I mean, HVAC you need to system. <laughs> <laughs> it's here right now. As we, it turns out we know that two guys from Rotor Rooter actually use it, and they've gone this on to do very amazing this things is true. with their FLIR. <laughs> so we have been experiencing a number of cold spots that evening while we were in the ballroom. And if I remember correctly, you said that's a, a pretty big phenomenon, these strange temperature fluctuations throughout the house. And uh, Tina and Pip, uh, who you can see in the smaller inset photo, there's two bright lights, that's where they are. The very white and red, that's where they're sitting in the flare. So that's yeah. where it brings like the up the heat. And, mm -hmm. and then cold is uh, blue, right? Okay. Uh, and so Tina kept feeling like there was someone standing next to her and this is cold pocket that was next to her because you would see that, you would see the blue area where the bar is and then the upper middle is where the window is. But then this other slightly uh, human shaped blue, right where you see the temperature uh -huh. target just started to form there. You ready and, to go uh, let's Really does look like there's someone standing. Not the lights went on again. No, I don't know if, if I moved yeah. in just the right way. I don't, I don't think so, babe. God, the same that would be some amazing. That would be some amazing range. If you, Especially if you since you narrowed it. And you said so yourself. Yeah, and you had some motion sensors back there that yes, were going that's off. That's right, and we had the motion sensor go off. 
back there and when Tina right. said, oh, it feels cold again, or so I the motion light like went off right after that. So right. it was so stark between what I was seeing through the FLIR initially in that area. You, you could see definitely where it was, the windows were cool and like the front mm -hmm. side of the bar was a little cool, mm -hmm. but there was there was no separate kind of Yeah, well, it's like the, blue, yeah. the green is mm -hmm. going for the temperature yeah. range and yes. it's like it's broken by the yes, blue. Yes, yes, so yes. You, there's something, there's no really, yeah, there's no explanation on why like you would have this stop point. Like yeah, the temperature right. should kind of be streamlined across, but yes. it, there's the break. It looks pretty darn good. Right. I want to show in. <laughs> so, something we say a lot with old spirits, it adds up. We moved then from the ballroom into the library. And uh, we have a, we, we know this is our first visit because you had found us a box just in case Shadow made an appearance. Oh, that's right. And uh, we're going to come back to that box in just a second. But um, this was one of the first clips that we got and uh, that, that we that we circulated from Linville Manor on different uh, on different five minute paranormals before the filming of this episode. And it's it's now time to finally unveil it officially okay. on on the show. Uh, this is still one of my favorite moments, oh my not gosh. just at Linville Manor, but yeah, anywhere, but just anywhere. I don't know what's on the switch in here and what's not. Is there a switch where you can switch? The whole room's on the There's a switch right there. Yeah, but that switch does not seem to do anything. Exactly. It just, oh, it just shuts off the uh, armor. Oh, no, <laughs> it shuts off the armor. All right, let me see if there's a switch over here. Yeah, well, these switches here. Hmm. That was not us. Again. I think I heard Sabrina say mom. Huh? What? I thought you were in another room. Did you not? I heard that. I thought that was Sabrina. I heard mom. Me too. That reaction, Brent. That was not on your She's right behind you, T. All I said was, huh? I love that. First ever disembodied voice. Second time we've caught something on stream, mm -hmm. and we had two people in the stream that night. One of them, uh, one of them, another another OSI member, Resonant Moon. They sent us the clip and said, "Listen for this." Yeah, yeah. and it popped. It yeah. really popped. Now I thought, and we caught that on several devices. On several devices. Yeah. Now uh -huh. I thought, so we heard it, That's and we awesome. caught it. Yeah, yeah. But and, 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 and then the stream caught it, and then the girls caught and it. And there was like. Did something just happen? Well, and it's like, and it, yeah. it did. And the yeah. best is capturing that like human moment of everyone like, but well, that wasn't you? That wasn't you? That wasn't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> did you not? Uh -huh. oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you would think, you would think that the disembodied voice, that would be enough. That would be enough. But my wife, she's, she, she outdid me. Um, if you look on this clip here, I have, it's a very, it was a very tight, short clip. And what I've done is I've put in the original audio so you can hear it before... I ran it through Audition, and then not only did I clean up and boost the audio, but I slowed it down. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear a very affected version of the very rushed EVP yeah. that we caught yeah. here. And from the reactions of what's going on here, you can tell none of us heard it. Mm -hmm. And so, courtesy of my wife... Right before Simon calibrates. Now, oh, wait for it. If Simon works, I'm gonna set this. Okay, so this is the affected one, right? Yeah, this is the okay. enhanced audio. gave me a bit of a chill when I heard it for the first time. It's it's because woof. Um, the turnarounds are always a little spooky. always a little freaky. But the, the, I don't the, know if that's because of our association with something being yeah. Famous. But no, that library had a whole lot going for it, and whatever was there, it was really 
it was attaching itself to me because watch watch what happens in this clip. Listen underneath my voice. That's okay. that's the real. That's I haven't the, seen this one either. Well, yeah. I just wondered too. Sure. Like, I mean, I feel like we talked about earlier that kind of spirits sort of know a little bit more of our stories, you yeah. know, than we've said. I want you yeah. to hold on to that thought. Okay. I want you to hold on to that thought because we've got a clip. I know you probably don't remember this because I didn't remember it until I found it. <laughs> I, it's coming up. Okay. We're, we're going to talk a lot about that. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as the spirits in the library, again, listen underneath my voice. Can you get close to the blue light? Just to let us know you're here, please. I know we're asking a lot of questions here. Can tell that thump is filled. No, that thump is upstairs. Okay. Well, if you're with us right now, feel free to just you don't even have to touch the blue light if the blue light is making you nervous. Just have to get near it. Did you really hear that? Mm-hmm. What'd you hear? It sounded like a kid's voice. I heard it too. So it's gonna say. But it sounded like it was from in that room with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bless Piper. Piper. Yes, we heard that. Yeah. We actually heard that. Yeah. I do remember that. It sounded yeah. like, I don't know, I heard like, I'm here or something like I over here. Or it just seemed like someone trying to get our attention or yeah. trying mm-hmm. to get your attention while you were talking. Like, yeah. hey, you yeah, know, okay. kind of old yeah. kind of vibe. Kind of old, old, you know, yeah. and yeah. yeah. So we have several clips from the room we're currently sitting in, which we're calling the parlor, of course. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to come back to one more in depth a little later. But this one I want to show off because I remember Phil said that you specifically wanted to find out if we got any evidence whatsoever of shadow. Now, being cat people, me and me and Pip, being cat people, we were also on the lookout for shadow. There was even a clip that didn't make the final cut, but there was a clip where um, Phil, uh, we were in the library. Phil says, oh, I think Shadow is near. I immediately start tapping the floor. And he goes, isn't that just like the Morrises? They're going to try to get the cat straight away for themselves. <laughs> well, the thing was, I was like, okay, I'm going to run with this clip. Then this okay. one came across Let's my desk. Some, uh, there's a dark shadow underneath the table. Mm-hmm. Sorry. 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 So it was under the table, then it went to the right, and then I saw it moving to the right there. Very true. Shadow. Isn't it ironic that the cat's name is Shadow? <laughs> yeah. Shadow, we want to give you some pets. You want yes. some pets? Want some scratches? I hear you like to ride on people's shoulders. Oh, yes. Come on. Fence is holding mm-hmm. on to their liquid. I think skin. that was Piper. I presume <laughs> that was Piper. Okay. That's Shadow's not. Probably a little black. Wait for it. Oh, okay. There's more. There's more coming. Uh, a generally, yeah, black cats are usually the ones called Shadow. Huh? Generally, black cats are know a cat that was a cat's meow right. so there you go wow. shadow shadow got caught Job well shadow done. got caught i don't know if shadow is going to be happy about that but we because and the thing was where pip was looking that was where i saw shadow okay catching that sound i i have i have been around enough cats to know a cat's meow that's yeah. a cat's meow. are you hearing and you saw him from the dining room or from i saw room? it from from where pip is sitting okay. right now I saw it in the other room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow is a is playful cat. Obviously, was here 19 years with the family, yeah. so I, he's he's very much a people person. Uh, apparently, I mean, apparently, yeah. and my wife and I spend a lot of time. If we're not filming ghosts, we're filming our cats. Yeah. So we know what to look for, how to handle it, and uh, it was a pleasure to finally bring you. Uh, a moment yeah. with Shadow. And you merge both worlds, the cat videos and the ghost videos. All in one. All in there one. You go. All was in Shadow one. the Johnson's cat? He was before the Johnson's. Before the Johnson's. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he dates back into the Bowie family. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Got it. 
And this is where we're going to wrap up part one of our visit to Linville Manor. Thanks. And we hope that you will not only uh, continue to support Old Spirits, but make sure to like and subscribe. And if you got a comment about any of the clips that we shared in this episode, feel free to drop us a comment below. If you're intrigued by any of the gear that you see us using in these clips and you want to try out one of these items for yourself, we're happy to announce that we are Ghost Stop Affiliates. There'll be a link in the description, and if you follow that link, you can browse all the incredible products that Ghost Stop has to offer, pick something up for yourself, and we'll get a little kickback to support our channel as well. Again, thank you so much for watching part one. From all of us here at OSI, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the field.